Welcome back. A few years ago, I was teaching math in a school where I also ran the drama club. While working towards the annual school play, I was really excited about a scene set in a train station in Mumbai. I knew it was going to be so much fun representing the chaos, bustle and colour. I asked the students to choose characters from a typical railway station. And they came up with wonderful ideas, including a noisy tea salesman or chaiwala with his characteristic holler of chaiya, um, a businesswoman in a hurry constantly looking at her watch, a woman selling vegetables while swatting away flies, and a child sweeping the platform and wiping sweat off his brow. But when it came to depicting all these characters, the result was real chaos and not very pleasing to watch. I did some hard thinking about how to choreograph this scene of chaos. How could we depict chaos without it being chaotic? How could we create moments within the chaos for them all to come together? The next day, I asked the kids to choose a characteristic movement for their character. An action of wiping their brow or pouring tea, or checking the time, etc. Then I divided them into three groups. I told them I would count in a rhythmic beat. One group would do their action at the count of three, and for every multiple of three thereafter. The second group would go on every multiple of four, and the final group every multiple of five. I asked them to predict when they would all be doing their action at the same time. And as I watched the kids' excitement at seeing the connections between their times tables in this drama exercise, I realised how beautifully the two could come together. The result of that chaotic scene had elements of chaos, where groups were offbeat, and then moments of coherence, when their sounds and movements came together. First some of them at 12, then some others at 15, and finally all of them at the count of 60, the common multiple of 3, 5 and 4. I used math regularly in my drama club after that, and slowly I began to see how I could use it and other forms of performing arts to teach concepts of math. In this lesson, we will look at drama in math teaching. Educational researchers Mike Fleming, Christine Merrill and Peter Timms examined the impact of the UK's National Theatre's Transformation Drama Project on young people's reading, mathematics, attitude, self-concept and creative writing in primary schools. In their study, which was published in 2010 and was called The Impact of Drama on Pupils' Language, Mathematics and Attitude, they found that the drama project had had a positive impact as a value add in all the areas tested, but the most surprising was mathematical achievement. They observed that the cultural experiences that the project offered, that the project offered the students had had a positive impact on their learning and enjoyment of learning. They also had statistical data to support these impressions. This study gives us teachers confidence in the way theatre and drama can have positive effects on many different aspects of a child's school life. In promoting the use of these intersections in the curriculum, the researchers say, drama and the arts do not have to shun what are sometimes described as scientific approaches to seeking truth. Teaching math through drama and drama games is a great way to give children a different experience of mathematical ideas. By using their bodies, they can gain a deeper and more intuitive understanding of pattern and a feel for numbers which can then be called upon and referred back to in your usual math classroom. You can find ways to do that through the activities I've created for this course. But we can also go the other way. The larger-than-life experience of theatre and drama can open students' eyes to the magnificence and power of mathematics. Plays involving math are brilliant to take your students to see. If you can't find professional performances about math ideas running near you, you could team up with the drama department to produce such a play. 
or do some play readings. There are several wonderful contemporary plays that explore math and drama. You heard about a disappearing number in the introduction to this course. There is also The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, a moving play based on the book of the same name, about a boy on the autism spectrum who loves prime numbers. The Five Hysterical Girls Theorem has tons of number theory and explores what it means to be a mathematician. Then there is the play Hypatia, about the 5th century mathematician, pagan, philosopher and inventor. Why not team up with the drama department to produce one of these plays? It would be a wonderful collaboration between the two departments. Now, let me share a few ideas for drama games and activities you can do in your math classroom. Laura Cole, a teacher and actor based in Hawaii, suggests some fantastic ideas. For instance, for younger children, she talks about the importance of action songs that focus on numbers and counting. Songs like Five Little Monkeys or Ten Green Bottles are fantastic because they involve counting forwards and backwards, addition and subtraction. In these songs, young children experience order, timing, beat and the rhythm of music as well as explicit mathematical ideas such as counting, sequencing and understanding time. Using actions while performing and reciting integrates movement with the math idea and can help children really get a feel for the numbers. For older children, Cole suggests drama games like getting kids to move around in a large space and then calling out for them to get into groups of four and form a square or groups of five to form a regular pentagon. The theatre company Complicity is a physical theatre company in the UK that has done work connecting math and theatre. You can learn more about their work in lesson one of this course. Complicity created the Ensemble Maths Project in 2018. They produced a free resource called After the Production of the Play A Disappearing Number, which is available online. It consists of a curriculum as well as professional development material to bring theatre and drama activities into the math primary classroom. What is ensemble work in drama? Ensemble is a way of working in which a group moves, thinks and creates together. Complicity realised there is an overlap in this ensemble-based way of working and the way that children learn math. They encourage teachers to use an ensemble approach in their math teaching. One of the ways of working in an ensemble is arranging the group in a circle. A circle means everyone can see everyone else, you feel part of a group and it removes a sense of authority. Everyone is equally important. Math comes in when you can use the group to explore the properties of the circle, for instance, exploring multiples or pi. Also, getting a feel for the shape of a, phys of a circle physically, like keeping an equal distance from a point, and how a small change in position can warp the shape. Here's another drama idea to use straight away in your classroom. It uses handshakes to explore combinatorics and it's inspired by the TED talk by Eric Stern and Carl Schaefer about dance and math. Tell your students to pair up and create a handshake. Let them be creative and wacky. Then ask them how many ways there are to do that handshake. For instance, using different hands. Both pe people using the left hand, one uses left, the other right, and so on. This is a combinatorics problem. You can extend the problem by getting learners to create more complex handshakes, including using their elbows or their feet or their heads, but keeping the number of moves constant, say three moves. Then ask your students to work out the number of combinations that are possible. The physicality of the complex moves, the creativity of inventing handshakes and the mathematical thinking about combinatorics come beautifully together. Drama is a surprising but effective way of exploring mathematics and by using drama 
students can express themselves in ways they wouldn't in routine math lessons. By moving and creating math with their bodies, students bring a joy and playfulness to their learning. In the next lesson, you learn how to help students use math to feel confident in the performing arts. See you there.